Today there was so much to cover and so many, you know, we had two panels on pillar one, we have a panel on pillar two that we didn't have time to do that. So my colleague suggested I round up the, you know, the entire day with a brief few remarks to keep you away from your drink for a little while longer. There will be drinks outside shortly. Um, in fact, they may even be there already, but I, they, were, they were certainly scheduled for a few minutes time. So, I mean, trying to, trying to sum up the entire day is, is clearly impossible and, and I won't even attempt it. Um, I did have kind of a few thoughts, you know, there's so, many, there's so many things that have been said, you know, I agree with many of them, I disagree with many of them. Um, I started scribbling down all the things, all the points I wanted to make in response to what other people had said, but then it got very, very messy. Um, <laughs> so I just wanted to um, pick up a couple of things, really. So I think, you know, to start off with, I think at, at lunchtime I was talking to me here, and me here uh, said, you know, why are you so bothered about you know, the problems of the international tax system as it stands at the moment, especially since the US tax reform. Um, you know, the US tax rate is now down to 21. There's a kind of minimum kind of tax there under the guilty for US multinationals. You know, there's the, the differences in tax rates that US multinationals may face now between being at home and being abroad is much narrower than it used to be. Um, and, you know, that's with lower tax rates generally, maybe the things, you know, that I've been complaining about for many years aren't such a big problem anymore. Um, so I think a starting point would be, you know, we've actually based the entire day on the presumption that there's something wrong and we need to do something about it. Um, we could go back and ask, answer that. I mean, in practice, you know, that ship has sailed and you know, it's pretty clear that we're going to do something. Um, the question is, is what? Um, I think, you know, one of the issues that we face now is, you know, that ship has sailed that's because there's political pressure, political pressure, which may be to say there should be a minimum level of tax for all, all businesses. Um, but also the political pressure says do something about that and do it tomorrow or do it preferably today. Um, so you have no time to kind of step back and think what would be a sensible tax system in the long run. We have to find, you know, we have to find some political solution in the short run. Um, so that makes, you know, that I, you know, I have great sympathy with everybody involved in the process that, you know, what are we going to do? Um, so I, you know, at that point though, I say, okay, well, we've got these two ideas. We've got, you know, let's move back to the parent company and let's move to the destination country. And I kind of ask myself, okay, so in what, what is that going to solve? How is that, how are either of those or the combination of those two going to, um, help? I think it's taking pillar two first, you know, I, so I, I mean, I think Akim just said, you know, the, let's take it as a political imperative that there needs to be a minimum level of tax on multinational profit. Now, Jim may disagree. I think I would disagree as well. Um, but if that's a political imperative, then that's kind of pushing us in that direction. Perhaps we should just kind of make the best of that. Um, I think we sh that certainly kind of affects how we might think about doing it. What do we actually mean by that? And actually, is there really a imper political imperative? You know, as, as, as Jim was talking about, you know, some countries uh, would like a lower rate of tax. And, you know, there's plenty of economic theory that says that's a perfectly sensible route to go. And why should other countries which want a higher rate of tax, you know, gang up on them and try and increase their tax rate? So from an economic perspective, I think it's highly questionable. Um, the pillar, pillar one bit, um, you know, I've been advocating taxing in a destination base for some time. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of it's a step in the right direction, but it's a pretty small step. You know, I, so so our, our, our RPA proposal was already supposed to be some kind of compromise between putting everything in the destination country, and now we just want to put residual profit in the destination country. Now, I think the kind of proposal is, well, maybe you'll put like 20% of residual profit in the destination country. But, you know, adding a kind of you know, a new structure of tax in order to do that. So is it really worth it, I guess, is the, is the question for that outcome? It, you know, to what extent are we going to improve efficiency, fairness administration by kind of adding this bit into the tax system. Um, and I think there's issues there of, you know, what, um, what problems does it create? So there are all the legal problems that, you know, Itai was mentioning. How, in fact, are we going to do this legally? Um, that's the kind of big problem. And I think there's a big problem which um, didn't really get addressed very much is, you know, once we've kind of identified the fact that we, when it got some money, so it's a million dollars worth of, of taxable income is going to be put into a destination country. The natural thing is then to say, we have to take that million dollars away from somebody else. Uh, and the question is, you know, who are we going to take it away from? And, and are they going to be very pleased about it? And the answer, <laughs> the answer to the second question is almost certainly no. Um, so, you know, I think that makes the legal implementation even more difficult in a sense. You know, people don't, won't want to give that up. Um, 
But let me, you know, but the economic issue there is, you know, why do we want to take it away from somebody else in the first place? And that becomes, you know, we, because we want a single level of taxation. We don't want double taxation. We don't want double non-taxation. We want one level of tax, apparently. Um, now, that's kind of pretty puzzling, actually. When, so when we think of it, so, you know, so let's think of, you know, any, we have a VAT in the UK and we have corporation tax. We have double taxation. No, I hear you say. Do I hear you say no? That's that's not what we're adding up. We're, ta we're adding up income taxes. You, you're adding up a sales tax and an income tax and saying that's double taxation. That's not what we mean by double taxation. But suppose we, suppose we kind of take the pillar one proposal and say, actually, we're going to make that tax on revenue in the destination country. Uh, and we're not going to allow any cost at all. So, okay, we've got, that's a sales tax. Okay, we might not think that's a good idea, but it will be a sales tax. So if we think that's a sales tax and that shouldn't interfere with our income taxes, so we could just carry on with all the income taxes that we already have and there's no problem with double taxation. So we start there and then we say, okay, we're going to be a bit more generous. We don't really believe in, in sales taxes, so we're going to give you a, some allowance for costs. Um, so that makes it into an income tax. Now, for some reason, because we're giving you an allowance for costs, we now have to say that's an income tax and we have to take that tax base away from somebody else. So I think the whole notion here of single double taxation is pretty mixed up. And in a, in a broader sense as well, you know, how, it doesn't really matter how many times you get taxed. What matters is how much tax you pay. You know, you could be taxed 10 times at one percentage point a time, you've paid 10% of tax. Or I could tax you once at 75%, which you would you rather have. Um, <laughs> so, I, you know, I think, you know, the, the, issue, the conceptual issues here are kind of not at all straightforward. Um, that's certainly not kind of necessarily pushing us in the directions that we want to go. Um, I think it's quite interesting when we, you know, the, the whole kind of competition and the pillar two stuff, you know, Johanna was saying, you know, well, what's the minimum tax rate? Is it 10%? Is it 20%, 20, 25%? So I was working with the Rooting Committee not that long ago. It seems <laughs> quite recent to me. It was 1990, I think. <laughs> the, minimum, the Rooting Committee proposed the minimum tax rate of 30%. Um, so the world moves on, you know, if we, <laughs> a minimum tax rate 10% now will look very high in 20 years time, I would suggest. Um, so where do we go from here? I, there are immense challenges to the OECD, to the members involved in that, and even to academics who are kind of presuming to comment on, on what's going on. Um, I think I understood from Pascal first thing this morning that the idea is to can get at least some broad agreement on the outlines of, you know, where we're going by the end of this year, and then kind of work a bit more on details subsequently. Um, that sounds fine, except that, you know, I think I pick up from Itai, you know, actually the details matter, you know, and the details are gonna, you know, uh, the details always matter, the devil is always in the detail. Uh, you know, exactly how we do things is really gonna have to inform how we set up the legal structure, but it's also gonna affect very much the economics of it. So I think it's even very difficult to do that, say let's move in a general direction without really knowing a bit more about the details. Um, so I, you know, I wish this was more positive. I think there's a very difficult uh, road ahead. Uh, I don't know quite where it's gonna come out. I wish you all the best. And in the meantime, <laughs> I would like to thank everybody who's participated, but especially all the speakers. We've had some fantastic panels today and I'd like to thank you all very much for taking part. And there should be a drink outside. So thank you very much. <laughs>